What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of The Boys Are Back. I apologize right off the bat that I'm using my intro. I'm using my overlays for this. Um, usually I keep everything organized on my desktop, on my computer, and uh, I decided to put it in a folder and I and put it in an external um, file and um, I couldn't find the files. Uh, so we're going to go under this setup. Uh, my apologies, but... The boys are here. We got Pete and we got Brandon. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. What's going on? What's going on, Beto? What's up, guys? We're going to talk 49er football. Uh, again, once again, I apologize for the um, the inconvenience I'm not using. I will we'll be set up next week, no problem. But the most Fire. important thing is, I know, the most important <laughs> thing is our boy, Brandon and Peter here. So I guess for that, I get what? You're fired. Ah, I'm fired. All right, let's say hello to everybody in the chat real quick. Um, give me a second. Do, 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 do. We got my beautiful goddaughter, Jade, in the house. What's up, Jade? Um, Jimmy is in the house. What's up, Jimmy? Welcome, welcome. Will not be traded. A youth will be a niner. Let's go. We got our boy. <laughs> Niners throwback and now thanks for tuning in faithful make sure you all hit that like button and subscribe to the channel much appreciated and look who it is look who it is Melissa in the house hi you doing, uh, little sister good to see you much love much love much love let's see who else is in here real quick before I start reading all the comments we got uh, Daniel Barry sports highlights in the house what's up brother welcome to the show uh let's see who else we got in here okay so gentlemen it is the 16th of april next not this thursday but next thursday is the draft uh we're getting closer uh for christmas i don't know about you guys but i always said uh for me the draft is christmas in april is when i get to open up my my presents to see who the niners take uh with a 31 uh, are you guys getting excited as we get closer to the draft. And let me ask, uh, I'll start with you, Brandon and Pete. Are you truly a big fan of the draft? Is, do, you, do you go all out? Do you like get the barbecue pit going, get the chicken wings <laughs> or whatever you got to do? You set up the TVs and do you make a big thing of it? Or do you just kind of like, just watch it? Uh, I just watch it to be honest. Um, <laughs> the la the past couple of years though, since I started the podcast, I've been going on with uh, my Hive brothers, uh, with Matt and Zach and uh, the rest of the Hive crew, a lot. So that's what I've been doing the past couple of years uh, when the draft comes around. So uh, that's always been fun. And w right on, right on. And what about you, uh, Pete? Do you? Uh... Uh, I know you work during the week, so sometimes it's hard. But do you set that day off for the draft? Do you really get into it? Or do, are you kind of like Brandon, kind of just watch it and, you know, and just chillax and, and, and drink a cold one? Or do you make it a whole day event? Oh, I, I watch. Uh, I usually I'm usually off of work by that time. And the uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I just kind of I watch it and then I watch. Uh, I watch one like uh, some of the other content creators. I know I I watch Jace, Jesse Naylor and uh, and uh, he usually has a couple of guys on with with him. Uh, David is usually on with him, and uh, I love their coverage of it. And uh, then there's a couple of other uh, oh and Grant or not Grant. Um, ah, I know the the red beard Brad. Brad. Oh, Brad. Uh, I watch Brad. Brad, Brad's a good watch as well. So, like, uh, yeah, I'll I'll get in the chat with them. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I love the I love the draft. I love I am a draft junkie. I do mock drafts all day, like <laughs> every day, and uh, and I do it like multiple different draft machines because everybody has a different big board, and it's always fun to watch to see you know what uh, depending on whose draft board you go by, like what, what could happen with the 49ers. So. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. As for me, I'm a big uh, draft guy too. I like to do my draft, uh, some in a draft mocks as well, but I get, I get the barbecue out. I love to barbecue for those who don't know. I, I always add in new uh, 
uh, tools to the arsenal there in the backyard. And um, I'm going to be doing wings uh, uh, this Thursday. I set up the whole day. Uh, I go live from the beginning of the draft to the end of the draft. And we just talk to have different guests pop up and talk. Mm -hmm. And we talk and we break down every pick. Uh, each player going to each team is it, is it a good fit is it not based on the player what you know did the teams trade what did they trade for we talk all of that and then when it comes to 31 are the Niners going to draft uh, are they going to move up are they going to move down so I get excited about the draft I'm all into the draft it's been like that every year me and my younger brother uh, Richard Reese uh, we get together t this year he has to work but we get together and we do the draft together and we enjoy watching the draft. Like I said, to me, it's Christmas in April. Um, I'm always excited to see what mm -hmm. we do, particularly with the first round. And I know the last two years we did not have a first round pick. So we had to kind of sit there every other team pick. And, you know, we felt, I, at least I felt a little bit like the Rams fans never having a first round pick for a minute. And, uh, and now we do. So this year it's going to be very, very, very exciting to see what the Niners do. Uh, Pete, honestly, what direction do you think the Niners are going to do? Now, we're all guessing, obviously. We're all guessing. We're not John Lynch or Kyle. But based on your following of Kyle, the track record of, of John Lynch, and the way the direction they've gone, what position do you think they're going to go first um uh, and also want to ask you do you think they trade either up or down or do you i know it's based on what falls on the board i know a lot of things determine whether mm -hmm. they move up or down if players are there or gone but uh just for conversation was do you think they trade and if they do up or down and if they don't what position do you think they will draft that wouldn't surprise you uh so Look, <laughs> no. First off, nobody knows what the 49ers are going to do. Everybody can speculate, but literally, the 49ers are one of the few teams that it is almost impossible to predict what they're going to do. Uh, just because they've, I don't think anybody has been since since Bosa has been really able to predict who the 49ers are going to pick that with that first pick, uh, and. It's just uh, it's just really weird, but I think that they are gonna. I it it really just depends on how the board falls. If the if the if I, I think that if uh, what's his name, Fatanu, there is this Fashani. What can I, there's like two of them. Uh, Fuaga, there's Fuaga, and then there is there's Tisi Fuaga. Fatanu. From, uh, yeah, and then there's uh. Or Morgan, Fatan, uh, Fat Fatanu, Fatanu, then, Troy Fatanu from Washington, yeah. and then Ola. It's uh, what's his we're, name? we're looking at the tackles. You're looking at the tackles, right? Yeah, there's another let, one. Let me go to the tackles. Hold on, tackles, tackles, tackles. Because in the mocks, like any one of them, Latham, Latham's in there, and you, you got uh, uh, Fatanu, you got uh, Jason Latham, you got Mims. You got Barton, Morgan, Gayton, Taylor Gayton. Yeah, I don't think those guys. Are, I like they're Kingsley. Not up those guys. Summer, Summer Matara. I can't pronounce the last name. Kingsley uh, Sue Mataya. Sue yeah. Mataya. I like him a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I'm like he is my reason to stand pat. If if, if the uh, if the for the tackles aren't falling off the board like we think that they're going to, and people get wide receiver happy then I could completely see them going Kingsley, just staying pat and taking Kingsley, so Mataya. He, he was at 49ers uh, the, at the compound today uh, on his uh, top 30 visit. Uh, there was a bunch of people at the top 30 visit today, uh, but he was one of them that was there today. I like, I like JC Latham. I like, uh, there is another one. And I am just blanking on his name. What is... Oh, here we go. I'm going to pull them all up. Oh. Hey, Don. Oh, that's just get to see you. Rick Diaz, get to see you. Maverick, go. get to uh, see you. I Olam see you. Olamaya uh, Fashanu. Fashanu is his name. Like, uh, out of Penn State. He's a, he's a top 15 guy, but 
if he falls for whatever reason, I could see them them trading up to the twenties to get Fashanu, Fatanu, Latham, or uh, or uh, Fuaga. Any one of those guys, if they if it feels like that they're going on a run of uh, wide receivers, and because that's the only the only run that really teams are going to really go on, it's either going to be wide receivers or it's going to be tackles. And so, like, uh, if they go on a run of wide receivers and those tackles start to fall, I could see the 49ers going ahead and moving up to like 20, between 21 and 23, uh, to get to go and get their guy. So, but if that, if, uh, if there, if there isn't, if there isn't a run on wide receivers and the tackles go early, I could see them just staying pat and taking best player available. And then you got, then you got to talk about the 80 Mitchells. Um, you got to talk about the Zach, uh, the, the Power Johnsons. Uh, the Graham Bartons, those guys, um, which they could end up trading down, but I could see them taking Kingsley Suamataya there too. Yeah, I like I like him. Uh, I I think he's uh, you know, he's got I, the I, exact I, same measurables as Penny Sewell. He's just younger and like than Penny was when he was drafted. Uh, he's got more. And he's got less experience than Penny, but same measurables. Yeah. Now he's never played right tackle. He's always played left tackle. But we could try him out in, at right. But once so Mataya, uh, he played yeah. right tackle. Uh, Kinsley, really? Yeah, he played right tackle. That's interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. In twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at twenty twenty three. He played just. He had four uh, six hundred forty four snaps at left tackle, none in right tackle, but. In 2022, he played right tackle. He had 687. Mm-hmm. Oh, so he can play both. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Uh, That's why I like him is because if you can get a guy late in the uh, – if you can get a guy late, there's no reason to, to waste draft resources and trade up. If you can get a guy late that is that is used to playing both sides, uh, pause, it's uh, – I mean, it's. I think it's a good it's a good situation to be in. Right on, uh, and he's got measurables. He's athletic. He's he doesn't really he has really good tape. Like uh, I don't, I don't understand why he's so low. Other than there are some good tackles in this draft, so and there's okay. some good wide receivers. Uh, Brandon, kind of a similar question, but uh, in, in Pete Wynn offensive tackle, uh, which is a need that the Niners uh, definitely need to look at and explore. But as you're as a fan. And, and the history that you've seen John Lynch and Kyle being here since 2017, the direction they have gone and the draft, uh, which direction do you think they go? Do you think they move up, move down? If they stay put, what position do you think uh, the Niners will take that would not surprise you? Um, that would not surprise me. Honestly, well, well, we kind of been talking about the whole off season the past early month, month and a half, two months. Uh, it's, I think they stay put and they get their defense tackle, or and it doesn't matter what it is, but they're gonna get a lineman. Um, I just have no doubt about it, to be honest. Um, as much as I want them to get a tackle like Pete was talking about, I just don't see it happening. Like nothing surprises me when the Niners go defense first round, and I think they stick to it uh, next week. Come first round, pick thirty-one. Okay, and out of the uh, the defensive guys out there, um, you got UCLA uh, Latu, mm-hmm. uh, the br- the brother of the guy that we have that likes to drop balls uh, everywhere, you, you know. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that changes this off season. Fingers crossed. Even though you guys yeah. can't see my fingers right now. Um, yeah. And then we got this guy keeps falling. Uh, the kid from Illinois, uh, Jerzan uh, Newton. He's yeah. an inside tackle. I like this guy's He's- measurables. I like everything about him. I like him and Byron Murphy. Uh, but what do you, why do you guys think that Newton is, is falling? Uh, any of you? I think he's a one trick pony. <laughs> okay. I think he's another Javon Hargrave. Like uh, he's good, that. good, good pass rusher mm-hmm. from the interior, but not the greatest against the run. And like uh, that's that's all. Okay. What you have? Otherwise, you otherwise. 
I could see that though. Yeah, yeah. He's uh I'm not high on him uh that much, uh, but people are. I like Brian uh Byron Murphy a little bit more from Tex uh you know, the Longhorns. I like him a little I bit think, more. I think it would be criminal to take a defensive tackle in the first round. <laughs> oh, definitely, for sure. But let me, no, I, I, let, me ask you guys, let me ask you guys this. The latest the latest news, right, like Beto kind of brought up earlier is um, there now people are talking about Niners p- potentially taking a receiver first round. Um, yeah, I was just about to mention guys, that. Yeah, how do you guys feel about that? Like what? What would you do if they did take a receiver first round? My, like, how, my how would you feel speak, about it? Can I speak on it real quick? Yeah. Like, because uh, my my problem with the whole thing was that they were bringing up Lad McConkey out of Georgia, yeah, out of Georgia, yeah. and like this, this is the thing. Not that Lad McConkey isn't a good receiver. Not that he doesn't have really good uh, run after the catch ability. I get it. Mm-hmm. Like uh, people were even trying to say. Uh, well, this is this is my issue with him. They're they're uh, they're saying that he's more of a Z uh, type receiver, and he he's gonna have a problem with physicality at the line because he is his arms are short, he has small hands, so he's almost got to be a slot receiver, mm-hmm. and in my mind, and, and then because uh, and all I see out of him is what's the what's the guy's name from the. Uh, from the Raiders, that they they didn't want to re-sign him. Uh, what what was his name? Uh, the guy everybody was talking about, which is routing everybody up all the time. Oh, and he's no longer with them. Yeah, yeah, um, he's no longer with them now. But uh, that's what I see Lad McConkey as. Really? <laughs> and uh, it's not that Lad McConkey, and it's not that that guy is a bad receiver, but it's got to be a scheme fit uh, for him to to really be to really be effective. And my issue is positional value Mm -hmm. in the first round in the first round you're going to take a guy that has to be kind of a scheme fit he's not going to be a dominant wide receiver in my opinion in my opinion like he he's not good he's not going to be good contested catches because he's got short arms and small hands it's just not going to happen uh he does run great routes and he could be good in on certain teams with the right quarterback but I don't think that uh, I don't think that his as good as he is. I don't think that it is that it uh, outweighs even taking a uh, a tackle or another position that it may be a more uh, more value like tackle. What's more important to you is is another weapon on the 49ers more important than Purdy having more time in the pocket and being able to run on the right side of the line. So in my opinion, like it's about, it's not even about need, it's about positional value. And I think that a tackle uh, on the right side would be, would pay huge dividends if we could plug in, if they're better than McKibbitts. So I, that's the only reason why I kind of poo poo the idea of a receiver. Now, if all the tackles are gone, I could see taking A.D. Mitchell. I wouldn't take Lad McConkey uh, if A.D. Mitchell is still there, but. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't take Lad McConkey in the first round. I, I just, I just couldn't do it. To me, a first round wide receiver has to be dominant. Like Brandon Ayuk, do you think Lad McConkey is going to be on Brandon Ayuk's level? I don't. No, I agree. I don't know if you've watched any of his tape, but like, I don't see that. So, now would you take Brian uh, Thomas Jr. from LSU? Uh, he's an. He's an intriguing prospect. Like, I mean, he's he's not bad. He's he's better at what what we were just talking about, contesting oh, catches yeah. and that kind of stuff. But he's got his flaws too. I would rather wait to the second or third round. Like, uh, I'm almost the third round. I think I think they could get a Javon Baker, who I've been talking about since the beginning oh, of the draft. Uh, All of a sudden, yeah. everybody everybody's been jumping on Javon Baker. Uh, <laughs> like, I've been talking about him since February. And like uh, the, so, Javon Baker, UCF. Uh, I've right? got a few. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got I've got a few. Uh, there's a few guys that you could get late in later rounds. This is a really deep wide receiver draft um, that could get you the value that the 49ers really kind of need out of a wide receiver. Uh, because the the reality is, is is Kyle is going to scheme 
whoever it is, they've got to run the Kyle. They've got to run Kyle's scheme. They've got to understand Kyle's scheme. Is Kyle even going to start a rookie wide receiver? Is the yeah, question. I doubt it. And so, why would you pick a wide receiver if it's not even guaranteed he's going to start in the first round? Yeah, and, and, and like and uh, I, I don't know. If I can add to that, if if the Niners do take, I doubt it. They're going to take a wide receiver in the first round either. But if they do. You know, I, I just want to make it my, you know, clear my opinion on this. It's not, it has nothing to do with, uh, um, oh my God, I can't uh, think of his name right now. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, uh, being here yes, or not no. being here. He's going to no. get signed. Okay. He's going to be the future. If anything, they're going to bring someone, if they have to part ways, in my opinion, with Debo the following I year. 100%. Uh, I don't think they're bringing someone in to, re- to replace. A you is definitely someone to replace to develop and replace uh, Debo. And I understand that when you mention certain names of the team and and their fan favorites, people get a little annoyed. They get frustrated. Like, no, not Debo is going anywhere. A you is going nowhere. So and so. But the yeah. reality is, there's a money factor. There's a salary cap that is reality. And when the quarterback gets paid, and he will get paid next off season, and well well deserved. Uh, there's going to have to be some changes made. And some changes are not going to be fan favorites at all. People are going to be pissed because they're emotionally attached to certain players. And they can't fan them, the Niners letting them go. But you got to look at the now and the future, and you got to look at the salary structure and how you maintain strength throughout this season and going forward. And if they do bring someone in, a receiver in the first round. I, to me, it's a replacement for Debo in the future, not Brandon. Your thoughts on that, guys? Yeah, I can see that happening. Um, and a lot of people were start speculating, too, after uh, seeing that um, Niners could take a receiver in the first round. Now that people are starting to speculate, like, oh, yeah, that means uh, Brandon Ayuk is going to get traded, da 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 and they start making up all these rumors and stuff. And uh, honestly, it's like Twitter, Niners Twitter or X, I should say. Um, oh, it's it just crazy, get, bro. It gets out of hand, man, honestly, yeah. especially during the off season. Too many Niners um, fans and their feelings, bro. For real. Yeah. And then and then what makes it worse, too, is the, What's up, Neil? Po- the opposing fans thinking, like, for example, Steeler fans thinking that they're uh, they're going to try to get Brandon on you. I'm like. Yo, he ain't going nowhere. We're signing him. All this shit you're seeing yeah. online don't mean shit. His agent already said that he ain't going nowhere. So put that shit to rest, you know? Yeah. Polk from Washington. What's up, Leon? Welcome to the show, brother. Welcome. He says, uh, Polk is my receiver. I, I really want great route runner, high points, uh, the ball physical player, and sleeps in the weight room. Man, I got to change my glasses. To be there in first thing in the morning, love to get those type of players. He's a committed player. Uh, I think that there's so many options at receivers, and we only name yeah. a few uh, in there. And I don't think a receiver is something they're going to go in first place. I, I really think they're going to go a tackle or uh, um, defensive, defensive end. end. Uh, <laughs> I don't think even I don't even think they're going to go interior uh, with that thirty-one. I'll be shocked if they do, um, but yeah, the I could Niners... see them going. I could see them going. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Powers Johnson. I could see them going Powers Johnson in the first round, if uh, just depending on how the tackle. Do you think that they would have to move up to get him? I don't think he'll be there at thirty-one. I mean, I don't think he'll be there, but I'm just saying if there if, if there's a there, run on tackles, they'll jump, they'll jump if there's on a run, court. if there's a run, because the wide receivers are going to go hard, tackles are going to go hard. It just depends on what part of the first round it happens, and uh, so, and I think people are grading Graham Barton ahead of uh, Jackson Powers Johnson as a center. So, I just think that uh, that it's definitely possible that Jackson Powers Johnson could be there, and if he is there. And the, those those high end tackles have already gone. Um, I could see it; it's a possibility. There's just so many possibilities, but but yeah, like a, it's definitely a possibility because 
now because Jackson Powers Johnson, you can plug him in at guard and let him sit there and let him play guard for a year and then uh and then transition him to center. Uh he's got positional like uh he's played both. So the 49ers always love their their versatile guys. All right. So moving on. So let, let's say we take regardless who it is, let's just say we take an offensive tackle at 31. We didn't move up or down. We took him we we took our tackle uh moving on to 63, which is the second round. Let's talk about a player. What's up, Kenny? I see you, brother. Welcome. Um, talk about a position that you think, and I, again, everything is going to be taken by, based on who's on the board. We're not seeing the board. We don't know how the board's moving, but we're just committing. We're just talking, having conversation. Uh, the, yeah. the board's going to reflect on what they do, obviously. But let's say just for conversation-wise, uh, what position you think they'll they'll uh, tackle once they t- um they get their the guy in the in thirty one. What do you think they get at sixty three? What direction do you think they go? Uh, Brandon, go first. You're on mute. So you're saying at sixty three, if they go yeah, tackle thirty one, yeah, they're gonna, they got their tackle. Whoever it is, it doesn't matter. But they got their tackle. Okay. They're set there. What direction do they go at sixty three? Um, I say, I can see them going receiver at 63. Okay. If anything, like um, that. now, now who it is, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, of course. Cause we I have to, like I said, we have to see the board. Yeah. So I'm with you. But, it's hard to say. That's why I want to say position. Yeah. I don't say player. I just say okay. the position because it's hard to. To say the player without looking at the boards. That's why I only yeah. mentioned the position. Uh, yeah, I could see I could see receiver at 63. I like that. I like that. What about you? Uh, I saw you shaking your head up and down. I, you were a green. Pete, mm-hmm. what do you thought? I mean, receiver it's, the is a same possibility? Thing that, it's the same thing that we were talking about the first round. So if they yeah. take a tackle, <laughs> if they take a tackle in the first round, then they're probably taking a defensive end or wide receiver in the, in the, uh, in the second round. Uh, I would be shocked. I would be shocked if they go offensive line back to back. Uh, oh yeah. So uh, oh yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think that there is a few defensive ends there. I think there's it could be a tackle as well. Uh, like uh, there's a there's a few d, d- tackles there that. Um, so you got Marshawn uh, Nealon who went in mm-hmm. for his top thirty visit, and and then you've got a, uh, what's his name Malachi Corley. Or is it Makai? I can't remember what is. The, uh, I'm sorry, bro. I was too busy showing my Malachi, shirt. right? Yes, Malachi yeah, Corley. Oh, we're talking Malachi about Corley. Yeah, uh, yeah like he came going? in for his top thirty visit today, and he's going to be probably right around that. They might have to trade up a little bit in the second round if they want to go get him. Uh, but then, <laughs> but then you've got. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on the Xavier Le- Leggett? He's too much like DK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 49ers aren't, the 49ers aren't the 49ers aren't gonna like him. Yeah, no. that's true. No argument there, Pete. No <laughs> argument there. They don't like they don't like muscle bound guys that can run like the wind. They just don't. I, I don't understand the reference. Uh, a lot of people say that uh, Malachi is a supposedly a clone of Debo. I, I don't see it. Do you? I don't. I th- they use him in that. I think that, that his I team used him in the in that that way. So that's why people are saying he's this year's Debo, like uh, is because that's the way his team used him. But I don't think that that. I think that he's got a little bit more juice as a wide receiver. I think that yeah. he's got a little bit. Uh, he can do more uh, than than what they just than screens and and uh, sweeps and that kind of stuff. I think he can do more. Uh, I think he's a little bit uh, – he has a chance to be an actual, like, really good wide receiver. And uh, I just think he was a slave to that to that terrible offense they ran. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear, Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate I that. Uh, yeah, I agree with, with you as well. I like him. Um, you know, uh, he'll be uh, one that – what does he come out of? Western Kentucky? Western Kentucky. Uh, Western Kentucky. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So, we took 
Offensive tackle, we took our receiver. We got our, our tackle and we got our receiver. Two offensive two offensive side of the ball, guys. Do you think that at 93, now the Niners focus on defense? Or do you think based on who's on the board, they can still go offensive uh, personnel, uh, depending who's there? Any of you guys can answer. Mm, I think it can go one of two ways. I think they can either go, I think they're either going to go tight end at that one, or they're going to go, uh, or they're going to go detail or they're going to go defensive line. Uh, and, and honestly, it could be, they could go offensive line there too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Rick I think that's where Ro- for a guard. I think that everybody's talking this Rosen garden in, in the first round, like, uh, or maybe second round. I think he's going to end up going in the third. Really? See that. You know that that ah. tight end that that people are saying that he's a. Uh, I don't see. It. I don't think he is. Person. I don't think he's a hell of a blocker. First and foremost, but mm-hmm. the tight end. They're all. Everyone is you know is comparing to George Kittle. Uh, Bowers. Talking about Sinat? Brock. Oh, Brock Bowers. Bowers. Do you think he goes he does, in the top he ten? Can't block. No, he can't. Exactly. He cannot block. And people are like, he's the duplicate of George Kittle. I don't know what they're buddy. But do you think this kid can go in the first uh, top 10? I mean, it's possible because teams are looking for – they're not looking for a George Kittle because nobody runs the runs an offense like the 49ers do. Correct, correct. Like uh, So they're not really looking for a George Kittle. They're looking for him to run routes like a George Kittle. They're looking more like – what's his name from the Kansas City uh, Kelsey type of yeah, tight end. Yeah, exactly. Which that he can do, yep. That he like. I mean, I think he he could be what everybody thought. Um, what's the guy from Atlanta? Oh, Pitts. Yeah, I think he Kyle could be Pitts. what everybody thinks Pitts Pitts was supposed to be. He's been a disappointment, unfortunately. Well, I mean, he's had no. But then that head coach, play. they just got. They don't have Smith. a quarterback. He doesn't have a. Quarterback yeah, they don't have him. a quarterback either. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I think well, that it's been criminal, like uh, all the weapons that they have on that team, and they just have nobody to throw on the ball. Yeah, but it is what it is. Brandon, you were going to say something, brother? What's who? It, they just picked up quarterback this uh, this off season, right? Yeah, they got. Yeah, they uh, got Kirk Cousins. They got Kirk Cousins. That's who it was. Okay, that's who it was. I yeah, I don't you're, know where you're, you're, those Kirk guys' Cousins, stats are going to blow you're gonna up. You're going to see Pitts go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and sure. and London. Are going to go up? Yeah, yeah. Fa- for all those fantasy guys out there, this is the year to get pits. They're, they're running back. What's his Easily. name? First they're round. Run- the running back for the Falcons. Uh, um, oh yeah, then they got. Uh, yeah, they have that monster of a running back. But bro, uh, that they did. They only. Uh, it wasn't in the, Smith, the guy that was a head coach there last year that fired. He didn't hardly run him. Yeah, it was weird. What that is, whole offense? Yeah, uh, I, like, I think it was just really. It was tough because. They he used the same excuse that Kyle uses when he doesn't run CMC. <laughs> is that they were? Is that is that? Oh, they're they're stacking the box. They're stacking the box. Okay, well, I mean, but that's why you get a bell cow back. It, it shouldn't matter. Like uh, you've got, he's still your best option. <laughs> he's still your best option. So I mean, you at least got to give him an opportunity to break some tackles and and do some stuff. You know, back in the day. I mean, you had uh, running backs that, I mean, you knew people were going to stack the box. There was nothing, and there was nothing you could do about it. They were still going to run it down your throat. Yep. Arthur Smith. And Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, he's no no bueno. Yeah. Now he's the no uh, offensive bueno. coordinator for Pittsburgh. Yeah, I feel bad for Pittsburgh, man. Yeah. Well, he's a ba- he wasn't a bad offensive coordinator. No, for, but I'm talking about the run game. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's still, he, I mean, he was the uh, he was King Henry's offensive coordinator. What yeah. what is it? Maybe some 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 coaches not, and I'm I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize, Pete. But no, uh, there's a no, lot of a lot of good. head coaches. They just can't be head coaches. They're great coordinators, whether it's defensive or offensively. But when they get the whole responsibility of watching both sides, special teams, and they get all these mm-hmm. uh, personnel that they got to kind of do, they just can't focus. Some coaches are just meant to focus on a small window and like whether they're defense or they're offensive coordinators, 
Uh, we saw that a lot in the past with a lot of teams. Um, and I think, like you said, Arthur Smith is a better offensive coordinator than he has been as a head coach, but mainly because he doesn't have all that responsibility with the media, with, you know, with all three phases of, of the team. Um, so I can see your point where he can be effective there. Now they still have a, a quarterback. Well, they have Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Uh, no, it was. Yeah, Russell Wilson yeah. to Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, and they got Justin Fields. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. That's going to be an interesting uh, uh, thing there in Pittsburgh with those two. It's um, going to be. It's going to be a ugh, like. Excuse my French, but it's going to be a shit show. Like I, yeah. I think. Really? Uh, because Russ Wilson. Okay, first off, you got Russell Wilson, who has Warriors. underachieved, who underachieved, at uh, in Denver. Like he, I mean, and for multiple reasons. Like, uh, but he's been a dis. He was a disappointment. So now you're going to put give him a chance in Pittsburgh, and with Arthur Smith as the as the uh, the offensive coordinator, a new offensive coordinator. Plus, what offense are you going to like? What offense are you going to run? They better fortify that offensive line because that's been the issue with them forever. Is their offensive line just isn't good? But then, say Russ struggles in the beginning. So now they immediately immediately they're going to be calling for Justin Fields. And then Justin Fields, they're going to give Justin Fields a shot. He's going to struggle. As soon as he struggles, put Russ back in. Let Russ cook. It's just going to go back and forth, back and forth. Look with my boy, Dion. Hey, there he is. What's up, Dion? Dion what's up, Dion? Long time no see, my on, brother. Dion? I love this guy. We, we, we can get, me and this guy can go head to head. We have different uh, things in opinion, but I truly love and respect this man a lot. I love uh, Dion. I love the way he has conviction and what he believes in, and he doesn't mm -hmm. move from nobody. Uh, we do bump heads sometimes, but in a friendly way when it comes to football. But I love Dion. Good to see you, Dion. Says, what's up? Yeah, what's good, fellas? Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to do another show with uh, Dion soon, man. This guy's uh, a hell of a cat, man. I would love to meet him in person for sure. Welcome, Dion. Um, but, yeah, man, that's uh, – that is uh, so cool that, the, you know, the Niners. Uh, uh, real quick, I wanted to bring up a point that uh, Kenny brought up that I was not because I wasn't aware because I really didn't follow him closely, but he said Pitts only had three touchdowns in four years. His mm -hmm. stats have no choice but to go up. I didn't yeah. know he only had four touchdowns in four years. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, no, I, I mean, really three touchdowns. Up, Excuse me, honest. I'm giving him an extra touchdown. That's yeah, crazy. I don't know how. Tr I mean, I'm not saying that it's not true, but that's just hard to to digest. Yeah, uh, because that's weird. let me bring it up. Yeah, that's interesting point there. Pitts has three TDs in four years. Crazy. To your right? point, Kenny, he has no. He's got six. to go up. He's got six in three years. Oh, okay, but <laughs> that's still been in the three years. still that's still low. Yeah. I mean, Very, his rookie season, he had 1,000 yards and only one touchdown. Yep. Uh, it says, I love the beard. It's a good look. All right, I'm brother. You know, trying to, <laughs> you know, trying to keep up with my bearded friends out there. It, it's called being lazy, not wanting to shave, and then you just start grooming it. But uh, I appreciate Dion, man. Dion's cool. Dion, Dion got me fired up last in the playoffs, man. I got so pissed off. I, I was not gonna do football no more. I was gonna quit everything. And Dude, uh, man, I got, a, I got, I got, I became an emotional woman. Uh, no offense to the women, but uh, it's wild. Yeah, I have I got, to say, I got, that was one of the best shows, though. It was, it was, but very never entertaining. Personal with Dion, never, never. Uh, we just have different opinions when it comes to Kyle Shanahan. Um, and, and, you know, and the beautiful thing about football that we're all entitled as fans to believe what we want to believe and, and uh, agree or to disagree. But at the end of the day, it makes it for a good show. It makes it for a good Absolutely. show when you're fired up, man. Nobody wants people to be just in agreement all the time. You know what I mean? People want fire. People want a little bit of disagreement. And, yep. and, and the most fun part is when you can prove your point or at least try to prove your point against the other person, they're proving their point, it makes it for fun to watch. Then mm -hmm. kind of like, yeah, 
I agree. But I mean, also, it's it's about the world would be boring if you're if everybody agreed with everything all the time and you don't grow. You don't grow in anything when everybody's saying the same thing. So, like, I love the I love to hear all the different opinions uh, because, you know, I might get something out of it that I make might make me think differently about about my take. And like uh, when you're I don't know, when you're grown, the the more grown you get, the more you start taking in uh, other information. And and like uh, it it just I don't know, I've I've always I always listen to other people's takes and uh, because you just never know how it's going to affect you. You know, on that point, I, I, I agree with you, bro. You know, like people ask me, do you have any content creators that you don't like? There is none that I don't like. I like them all. No, there's well, more there's a of a few that I don't <laughs> always agree with. But yeah. my opinion is this. A lot of people, they love Grant Cohn. A lot of people don't. A lot of people like uh, David Lombardi. A lot of people don't. Whether which cup of coffee is yours, it doesn't matter. The the thing with me is this. Everyone has good points and everyone has bad points. And you can always take good points and take what you nibble at what you think is positive and whatever you don't agree with, you can toss it. Now, I heard Pete say he doesn't like uh, Larry Kruger and that's fine. That's his opinion. He's entitled to that. He just doesn't watch him. And that's fine. There's certain people, Mm -hmm. but I tend to like to watch uh, every, everyone's, uh, comments of the Niners and because I like to see what they're saying and I'll take the positives and whatever I disagree with regardless of who they are I just dismiss it I'm like nope I don't agree with that but for me to say that they suck and they're no good and blah 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 just because I don't like them I, I, that's just not me uh, I support all content creators like I said I don't I may not agree with them but I support them in a sense where I don't talk crap about them uh, that's me though that's just me, uh, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are talking crap about me. You know what I mean? And uh, so it's always it's it's a beautiful thing to have a Niner community that do their thing. Now a lot of us we can go way to the left field and do our thing, and we're like, "What the mm-hmm. heck are you talking about?" But yeah, uh, and I, you know, but it's okay. And a lot of people say, "Well, this person is close to the team, so they kiss the team's butt, and look, they'll never, you know." But that's why the beauty, the beauty of it is that every content creator brings their own flavor and you can hear their perspective and whether you agree with them or not. Like I have some favorites that I like. I also like Graham. I'm a big, I've never hidden it. I'm a big David Lombardi fan. I like his takes. A lot of people say he's too close to the team and he kind of kisses the team. Well, I, don't I like know. that. He how, reports, how is that a bad thing? It isn't. I, I agree with you. Pete. Yeah, I don't it get that. I don't understand it. Like, I mean, do I agree with everything David Lombardi says? No, no. of course not. Like, uh, but at the same time, I don't. I don't understand the take of him being close to the team is bad. Like, uh, I, I don't think that skews your, uh, unless the team is telling you exactly what to say. Uh, but even then, it's just a perspective. Yes. Like, uh, so, so I mean. When when people are talking about like I agree one hundred percent with what you said about about content creators as far as their perspectives I don't care nobody's perspective is ever going to offend me like uh, but yeah like uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it alone like no no I, I know the, it can be and no. some of the other ones but like uh, there's there are, some people get personal yeah and like, that's when uh, it's wrong and that's when I just have a problem. Like I have a problem with uh, content creators that decide to demean others, and like that's just that's just to try to get ahead. I see. I know that they put they put other content creators down so that people can follow them, so they can get more followers. And that I'm with you, Pete. I don't like that either. I think that if you're good at what you do, people are going to follow you no matter what. Mm -hmm. There's no need to step on somebody to try to get higher. In my in my opinion, so uh, I'm with you there. But I do like hearing a lot of, uh, I love John um, um, Chapman. I like the way he breaks down film. Yeah. I love his mod drafts. Uh, and there, and again, so not all we of us are so going to agree. Yeah. Not of, cause I like Larry Kruger. Pete doesn't. So we're never going to agree with that. But it's okay. We have our, we have our reasons why we do and we have reasons why we don't. And uh, 
But there's a lot of uh, content creators that me and Pete or, or Brandon do agree on. Like, mm-hmm. I don't agree with the, with the um, Warriors winning games, but they are. <laughs> wait, wait. They are not. I'm not going to be negative. This is a positive. This is a positive. They are an NBA team. And I understand Brandon loves the Warriors. Like, I love my Lakers. And Pete loves the Lakers. And for me to yeah. shit on Brandon because he loves the, the, the Warriors is, is crappy. Now, we can make fun with one another because it's competitiveness. But I can't be down on Brandon for loving a team that he loves. Just like oh, yeah. I can't hate the Ram fans. I can hate their tactics and what they say sometimes. But I can't hate them for loving the Rams. They love the Rams like we love the Niners. And um, they're little nuts, but they love their team. So every fan base is entitled to love their team. Every content creator is entitled to their opinion. We, we just don't ha- always have to agree, right? Oh, we're not going to. We're human beings. Like, I mean... Get 10 people in a room, it's almost impossible to get everybody to agree on one thing. Like, uh, so now yeah, I, I imagine do say this, millions. I'm I do even, say this don't talk millions. your shit on the keyboard, create your own podcast, make a YouTube channel, and express how you feel. One thing I can't understand is oh, um, Pete doesn't know what he's talking about. Brandon, oh, nine or six, this, this and that. Or all these negatives, right? But I don't see you making a YouTube. I don't see you putting your videos out and your thoughts, you know, to be criticized. So it's easy to criticize someone than to take criticism. And a lot of that's why they always they call them keyboard warriors and they won't come like Brandon. Brand, you know, Brandon, he, he is admitted. He doesn't know too much about college, but the man gets on here. The man gets on a draft. He does this thing because he loves to to come on uh, on these podcasts. And there's nothing wrong with that. I give him props for that. A lot of people talk their smack, but they're, they're like, oh, he doesn't know uh, college, blah, blah, blah. Where, where are your ass? Your ass is not on YouTube doing anything. So uh, that's just how I feel, uh, honestly. But real quick, as, we, uh, as we're coming closer to an hour, the Niners did made a, made a signing at corner. Let's talk about a little bit of Rock Yasin uh, as a death piece. What are you guys' yeah. thoughts on that? You want to go first, Brandon? Go ahead, Pete. I, I mean, Brandon. it's it's I exactly Brandon. what you just said. He's a depth piece. Like, uh, but at the same time, it's a good depth piece to have. He's a vet. Yes. He's a yes. vet. Talk about and it. Like, uh, I mean, the reality is is where we need every bit of experience on a Super Bowl on a on a Super Bowl roster. Like, I mean, you want this is we're gonna have a more experienced cornerback room now. Uh, with him and Yadam and uh, and the guys that we already had. Now that, uh, like, uh, I mean, we're, they're not going to be as young anymore. Before, we were having to, we were hoping that D- Demo didn't get hurt. We were hoping that that uh, that Mooney Ward didn't get hurt. Just so, because if they either one of them went down, I mean, you cringe at the thought of one of those other guys having to step into those spots. But now, they've got some depth. They've got some veteran pieces to plug into those spots, and it puts a lot less pressure on them in the draft. It puts a lot less pressure on them during the season, like uh, to that they have that that guy behind that uh, that they're not so afraid of of losing one person. I definitely love the the death piece as well. You want to add anything to that, Brandon? I know. Um, I agree. He's a, another death piece, but he's. I feel like he's there to, um, because he's a veteran. He's there to also teach the youngins everything um, as well and make them better um, as this, you know as the season goes on and if we need them like they're ready to go and stuff. You know, kind of like with um, um, Jair Brown. Like, I mean, he he learned a lot from Gibson and everybody around him and looked how phenomenal he looked last season. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know who, I don't know if this came up under, or oh, who's, who, who's, who goes on Twitch? That's you, huh, Brandon? Yeah, just don't mind it. Okay. I was going to delete it, but I can't. That's all good. Yeah, uh, don't worry about it. It shows up on my Twitch, not, nowhere else. No, nowhere, no worries. Uh, so, yeah, so guys, listen. He's a he's a great dead piece. Uh, 
you know, uh, to add to this. Now, uh, the, the other corner, I mean, I love the corners that we brought in, uh, but if I'm not mistaken, I think everyone is on a one-year contract. I mean, I think we're going to kind of lose most of our secondary in the next offseason, right? So mm-hmm. you think the Niners is wise to bring in at least two uh, corners in this year's draft? Well, they're they're talking about re-signing, D, re-upping Debo or Demo. Oh, are they? Like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they yeah. already started. Yeah, that. Oh, like, that's a, they, that's they a smart move. Started talking about that, yeah, like uh, because I mean, I'm, I'm sure that they see the same thing that we see. So I yeah. like uh, they do have some of those younger guys. They still got Darrell Luter, who we don't know. We know that they like the that like, they, they like him. We just don't know what he's going to be because he was hurt all the time. Correct. But then you've got. Uh, uh, but I mean, yeah, Moody Ward, Womack, I expect them to re-sign nothing. Moody Ward. I think they're going to re-sign Moody Ward. Do you uh, think so? Oh, I think so. You know he's going to demand a lot of money, right? Well, it just depends. I mean, it depends on on a few things. Like, does he make all pro? Like, does he make, uh, does, I mean, did he make all pro last season? Yes, he did. he did. Did he? Yes, sir. Was he third? He was third second. Team or second team. Okay. Second team, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean. He's gonna demand some money, but I mean, I mean, it is what it is. Like uh, they're What's they're up, gonna David have to, they're gonna want a guy because he's gonna be in his prime. So he's still gonna be in his prime. So I, 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 I love I, just, I, I love the addition of, of, of Traverius Ward. I think this kid is special. I think his potential still ahead. His best football is still ahead. It, he would be a key piece to sign. Um, what what ideally? What do you think the the bracket is for him? Uh, 17? Mm. I don't think it's going to go that high. So you're thinking about 15, 16? You're talking about a year? No, for three years or, you know, a huge oh, contract. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, can no see. not for a year. I was gonna, like, if, they sign him, if they resign him, they're going to sign him for at least four years. Yeah. Uh, I think they sign him. They, I think they're going to resign him for like, It's going to be probably like a two-year deal. You think two, so? Two, yeah, I think it's. I don't think it's going to be long term. I think it's okay. going to be a two or three year deal. You agree with that, Brandon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be a two three year deal, and I think it's going to be probably around that six or seven million a year. Okay, if they do that two year thing, I see that. I see that. Um, but yeah, because the, the 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 cap is set to blow up again. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah, I don't think he'll sign for two years. I think, I, well, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Well, that's why I think he's going to sign for two or three years because the cap's going to blow up again, and he's going to want to get. He's going to want when it so blows he's gonna up. Bet blows on up, himself, he's gonna, basically, what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. Okay. Because yeah. I think he does want to stay there. I just think he wants to get. He does want to get paid, and that'll give him a chance to get paid uh, for cor- like nickel corner money. And like, uh, because that's what the 49ers want to use him as. They want to use him as a nickel corner. And like, uh, cause he's not going to be outside next year. I think that's why they got yacht him and they got oh, yeah, all these gonna guys. Be strictly inside. He's going to be the nickel. So uh, I agree. nobody's, pay- nobody's paying a nickel 10, 10, 15 million a year. Like that's not going to happen. So uh, I think Yadam and, and, and uh, Ward are be the, are going to be the two solid outside. I don't even think uh, uh, Embry Thomas is going to make the team. I don't. You know, I said that you last year. <laughs> I said that last year, and last like, year. and somehow he came in and used and had like one of the best camps of his life, and like. But fool me once, stuff. you can't fool me twice. If he has a good camp again, I, I don't know if the Niners will be too itchy to bring him back in. He's like, eh. He got burnt, bro. I I I like Embry Thomas sometimes. He got burnt a couple times. Yeah, bro. I mean, I, he's, he's not a, consistent. He's a, head ca- he's a head case. Like uh, so. That I don't his, really. I'm not. I don't follow him closely, so I don't know. But well, his issue. It's in when I say a head case, it's probably just a little disrespectful. But like, uh, it sounds oh, a little okay. disrespectful. But the when I say he's a head case, Pinchy Pete. Like uh, the what I mean by it is is that is that his. His play is directly reflected, uh, reflective of, of his mindset at the time. If he gets burnt once, it's gonna snowball. Oh, I got you. I got you. What you're talking about. And like, uh, he's yeah, you could use a better words, a, bro. But I hear you. 
yeah, he's a very emotional, emotional player. He does. He like, he doesn't uh, forget about if it. If he the feels next play. himself, he dwells on it. Yeah, if he does well, if he has a couple of good plays, and then he can look like a world beater after that. But uh, but but yeah. So when he, he does well, his confidence play. pushes him forward. Exactly. When he does bad, everything his his that that feeling pushes him down. He's very yeah. emotional. Corner. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. Yep. You can't be. I mean, it's okay to have emotions, but you have to have a. You gotta yeah, forget play. every. Yeah, and move on. That's one thing I like about Lenore. He uh he gets burned or he gets misplayed, and he'll come back even stronger. It's like exactly. Okay, instead of instead of dwelling on it, what can I do better not to do that again? And I, that's another exactly. thing about Ward. Ward the same way. Uh, yeah. He get you know he'll get he'll get on one and he'll jump and and play better. And I the love best that. corners get burnt. The best corners get oh, burned. Oh, yeah. Like, Name uh, me a so, corner that hasn't got burned in their yeah. in their career. Deion Sanders got burned. J.R. Yeah, Rice is yeah. one of them to burn him. Yeah. But we're not going to argue that he's not arguably one of the best corners out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. The guy from the Jets, I uh, forget, forgot his name. Uh, they always call him on the island. He was always on his own island. They named him on the island. Oh, Revis? After him. Revis. I love that kid, man. That guy was... Yeah. But he got burned. They all do, bro. It's just... Yeah, he had a couple what of bad seasons. Is how do you respond <laughs> to, uh, yeah. to 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 that? And uh, Sherman is is a perfect example about forgetting the next play, right? Sherman yeah. will get burned and he'll come back and make a play the following play, and that's yep. when you know you exactly. have a good corner. Yep. Uh, do the Niners? Do the Niners? And real quick before I ask that question, everyone in the in the chat, thank you guys. You guys are popping in the chat. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to each and each of our channels. It's all in the description below. Uh, normally, I'll, I'll pop up these guys individually with their places, but um, not going to goof this. I misplaced the file. Uh, I'll get it going next week. But uh, make sure to follow each and every one. It's in the uh, description below. Click on it and support us. I appreciate that very much. Listen, regardless if Kyle uses running backs or not, if he just sticks to. Uh, to McCaffrey, whatever uh, his issues are with that. Do you guys foresee in the fourth quarter, particularly a uh, fourth quarter, fourth round, particularly because they have four, uh, they have three picks in the fourth. Can you see the possibility of them taking a running back with one of those three picks in the fourth round? Uh, fourth round? This, yes. Fourth, particularly. Yes. Mm, I could see it. I can see it I too. Can see, I can see. Because they really like that couple, kid. Uh, there's a couple of running backs. There's a couple of running backs. The guy out of Tennessee and uh, Jalen Jalen Wright. Is that what his name is? Jalen Wright. The, this kid Gorard. I can't pronounce his name. Is he? Garendo. 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 They like Garendo. him a lot. Yeah, I like him. I like yeah. Garendo a lot. Like, uh, and uh, people have been trying to discredit him. <laughs> the last oh, he's a couple great of player, weeks. man. Uh, I think he is a space eater. And uh, when I Ooh. say that, he is he's a guy that he's not going to do. It's not a lot of wiggle. There's not a lot of wiggle to it. He's a one cut and go type of guy. But you look up and he's getting five yards of carry because uh, he he has such a quick burst that like he's already up on you and he doesn't break a lot of tackles. So that's that's uh, but he's a he's a first down machine. Isaac from Louisville. Yeah, Isaac Garendo. Yeah, I like he's, him. He's 6'1". He's 23. He's going to be 24 mm-hmm. up there. In eight. Uh, he's 225, so he's, he's uh, I like he's him. I know the Niners are, are like him, but this is this other kid that I like. Um, where is where is he? Um, I don't know if the Niners will get him, uh, but I like his running ability. Uh, here we go. Trey Benson from Florida oh, okay. State. I like him. I, I, yes, I'm a Seminole fan, but I, the reason to why the I like him is I watch yeah. him a lot as a fan. But I like uh, what he does. I know a lot of people want Frank Gore, a junior. Why? Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm with you, Pete. <laughs> I am with you. Listen, I mean, I get it. Frank Gore. Out of all the sons or brothers or cousins or any family related player that is going to be drafted, this hey, is my didn't... opinion. I want to get your guys' thought. The one prefer that if I if we have to get. A relative of a certain uh, son or brother. I'm I'm going with Luke McCaffrey in the fourth or fifth round. That's who I'm going with. I'm not going with Brandon Rice. Uh, 
what are your guys' thoughts? Who are you guys yeah, thinking? I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, I mean, Luke McCaffrey is the only one that I think out of the 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 brothers, sons, whatever, just relative. Like, uh, uh, that are is that is draftable. The rest of them are not draftable, in my opinion. In my opinion, Brendan Rice. Hey. I know he's got all the measurables. I get it, but if you watch his film, <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. He oh, he's not a he's not the greatest route runner. He is not the greatest contested catch guy, even though he has size, and even though he ran a great forty time, that that is not his speed when he's playing. <laughs> so it's a. Uh, it is what it is. I I think that he should go probably a lot lower than what he's slated to go, and uh, I'm hoping that the four, he went on a top thirty visit with the 49ers. I'm hoping the 49ers don't pick it. <laughs> I hear you. Any thoughts, Brandon? I think he's a waste of, waste of a pick, and he doesn't block. No, I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> and you know if you don't well, block, you don't get the rock, right? Yeah, I I feel like they're just doing all this just to out of respect for Jerry. It is. Didn't Owen's son uh, go for? Yeah, but he's uh, not going to be drafted. They no, he's going to go undrafted. Yeah, he's going to oh, go I know, undrafted. But I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, right? he, he did the camp with the Niners. Yeah, they okay. brought and him. I heard it the, what do they call the local camp? He was there. Yeah, and yeah. I heard it wasn't really eventful. Like uh, no, but yeah. I can see the Niners taking him undrafted though, bringing him in. I I don't even see that. Like I'll be honest. Really? Like uh, I I just I from what I heard of the. Um, from that that pro day or whatever that that was that they did, thank you. Like uh, it just it it wasn't there was nothing special there. And I think there this wide receiver class is so deep that I think some guys are going to fall out of this draft, and uh, and the 49ers are gonna are gonna end up picking up one of those guys that fall that fall out. Like I could see an Aeneas Smith uh, like falling out of the draft, and the 49ers going after a guy like that or the uh, Anthony Gold. Somebody like that that has returning ability. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, all right, guys, as we're coming close to an hour, we're already actually at an hour. It's fun when we talk 49er football, guys. You guys in the comments are amazing. Uh, Dion says he wants Rice's son, uh, Brandon. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's cool. I Listen, um, if I don't know if, if, honestly, if I can go. From top to bottom, I would take Luke McCaffrey. I would even take uh, um, I'll I'll take um, Terrell Owens' son before I, before I take Rice's son. This is me. Then it'll be Frank Jr. and Rice's son at the end. I I like him as a USC. Uh, I like him, but I'm not a big fan. Uh, and it, to me, he's gonna have so much pressure to uh, try to fit his dad's shoes. The, that's going to mess with him. Um, and any Niner fan that wants him to wear number 80, if he did come to the Niners, you're crazy. The kids he said he didn't want to come and play. He said he didn't want to play for the Niners. No, I, can you blame him, though? He wants yeah, to no, I don't. I don't. He, he I don't want him to play here either. Name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't he, want him to play here either. He wants to make like, his uh, own name. Yeah, I, I think that the, it would be a complete Nepo pick. and like uh, That's a lot of uh, pressure, just, bro. Yeah, and and you know Kyle don't care. He's yeah. not gonna put him out there. He's not gonna put him out there if he's. You don't not, care if, he if he's uh, whose son he is. Yeah, exactly. He's not gonna. He can put be him his own son, earn it. and he would have put him out there. This is the thing. I don't think he's gonna earn it. I don't think he's gonna earn it. I don't. I don't see the work ethic in that kid. Like uh, I, I just don't. But hey, go ahead, go ahead, take a flyer. Like uh, I mean, if he's there in the sixth or seventh, okay, maybe. No. Oh, Brandon. Rice? Yeah, Brent Rice. No, he'll go in the, the third. Seven, he'll, he'll go in the third or fourth. I mean, somebody's going to take a chance on him. Correct. Like, uh, because of the measurables. Yes. Like, uh, but, okay. That's not the way the tape, the, the, uh, his measurables are not what the tape says. I love Dion. Dion goes, down. Yeah, I can say I what he wants. I had to think about that. Yeah, I want T.O.'s son now, not Brent. If I had to choose between one of the sons, I'll take it, Tariq. I'll take Tariq Owens. Way before I take uh, Brandon, based on the route running and everything he can do, man. Yeah, it's not that that that, that kid's even a bad player either. No, like, no, I just no. Think that there's like I, I said, think Brandon's going to be that, great. It's just not. It's hard to be under your dad's shadow yeah. like that. 
especially a, a guy that is very involved like Jerry Rice. Can you imagine? You, you know, I love Jerry. Listen, I love Jerry, best receiver. But Jerry gonna be over there with the chain. Jerry is very drama. Cup. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dramatic, <laughs> dramatic, dramatic dude. I, you know, and he's my gonna favorite, be yelling at Kyle. My favorite receiver back then was uh, Lawrence Taylor. I mean, Lawrence. Uh, now I'm forgetting. Um, Taylor, well, John Taylor. Excuse me. John Taylor was my my favorite receiver back in the day, uh, right behind Jerry. I think that he could have been a number one receiver and anywhere else, but he was shadow casted under Jerry. It's hard to be when you're under Jerry, man. Uh, yeah. What's going on? Uh, with the Warriors, bro. <laughs> Warriors are fucking pissing me off right now, dude. 31 yeah. to 20. Hey, listen. I take... Fuck everybody's stupid. like, your Lakers won. Your Lakers. I'm like, yeah, but we're going to get our butts kicked uh, in the first series. We're going to go in a... Hey, if, listen. If we can beat the Nugget, one game at least is better than what we did last year. <laughs> if we yeah. can at least get one game, right? Because we got swept last year, so... We'll, we'll see, man. So it's like Lakers, you win. Your prize like, is you're playing the Nuggets in the first round. Like, I'm like, oh, they're man. they're they're playing sloppy right now. Like they already have like bro, they've like been playing like that all year. Brandon, Brandon they're forty six really. and thirty six. Yeah, they're forty six and so? they're playing like a forty six and thirty six team. Nah, and he's not taking a shot at you. He's just being obvious. Then Lakers like, too. Sacramento's forty six and thirty six. Okay. That's why they, that's why both of these teams are on the on the play in, bro. I'll be honest. That's today's NBA. That's today's yeah. NBA because everybody's uh, everybody is so it's all live by the three and die by the three. If you're not hitting that day, I mean, any team could get beat just because. That's what makes these these playing games so uh, so like interesting is because is because literally it's just who got hot. Yeah. And the whole thing that the Lakers won in the bubble, the stop Lakers won in the bubble. Threes. It's not a real. I mean, how are you going to tell That's the Warriors funny. to stop shooting threes? They're not going in. <laughs> Fucking drive in if it's not working. Fuck. They don't That's, know anything else. That's all else. they do is threes, bro. They, they don't. They don't, don't go to the paint. <laughs> They're not a paint Look, type of team. Yeah. I mean, they they drive. They've been paint but, type of type of team this year. Well, they've been more. Obviously, but they they stick to their, they live or die by their threes, bro. Shoot anything, bro. Fucking everything's going in for Sacramento. Make that hey, bro, make sense. bro. It's just the first. It's the Is second. it in Sacramento? Oh, it's in Sacramento. Yeah, it? but it's the game's not over, bro. Things can change so fast. Yeah, especially today's NBA. Like uh, all it takes, you know, the the Warriors always hit people in the third in the third quarter. So yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, gentlemen, it has been fun. Listen, guys, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We had a big crowd tonight. Uh, per, thank you. Give a hand of applause for everyone in the chat. You guys were awesome. Make sure to follow Pete's channel. Make sure to follow Brandon's channel. If you haven't done so already, everybody's I haven't pissed you uh, already. links are in the description <laughs> below. Follow all their channels. Pete, start with you. What do you got going on this week? Uh, well, what do you got going on for the draft, brother? Uh Please share with everyone uh, viewing tonight. Uh, so I got my show on Thursday. Uh, should be on Thursday. And uh, depending on if this person gets back to me or not, but uh, it might be on Friday. But uh, otherwise, I'm having I'm having a show either Thursday or Friday. And then on Niner Fanatic Podcast. And for the, the draft, I mean, what day of the week is the draft? On. The twenty fifth, huh? The twenty fifth. Well, I know, but what day of the week? Thursday. What day of the, is it? Thir- oh, nice. So I'll be having a show that day. Thursday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I'll be having a show that day, and it'll be uh, so I'll be I'll be probably covering at least a couple hours of it, like uh, if my if my wife doesn't kill me, and kill him. And yeah, kill him. Yeah, for real. Like, and yeah, uh, you don't have to tell her twice. Like, from the and but I, I appreciate everybody for the chat, like uh, for getting involved. It was uh, a lot of fun in the show, like uh, and appreciate you guys for uh, for kind of like watching. The, I've been getting a little bit more traffic on the channel, so I really appreciate everybody coming. Right out. on, bro. But, right on. But uh, but yeah, it's a uh, Niner Fanatic podcast. I am on YouTube. I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm on Twitter. 
I'm on anywhere where you can get your audio podcast. Uh, and now I'm on Twitch as well. Oh, uh, you joined so, the Twitch family. Uh, yeah, I had to join the join the cool Welcome kids. To the and, dark uh, side. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't care where you get it. Just get it. And make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend so we can be friends every day. I love that week. phrase. And, yeah, it is what it is. Like, uh, Especially if you like being pissed off because you know I'm not going to say what you want me to say. So... <laughs> Wait, what's your name on Twitch? Uh, Niner Fanatic Podcast or Niner Fanatic Pod? Pod, all one word. Niner Fanatic. Welcome, 49er Media. What's up, brother? Welcome to the show. I think I have zero followers right now. (laughs) Get to see you. Get to see you. I I just hit the follow. I definitely, yeah, same here. Uh, real quick, uh, Senor uh, Brandon. What you got going, bro, on your channel? And let everyone know about your WWE channel. If those that love uh, wrestling, they can join. Take it. Um, so for the draft, I believe I'll be going live with the rest of the Hive crew, like usual, that we do every year. Um, we'll definitely be back here for the Boys Podcast next Tuesday. Um and then I also started up a WWE or slash AEW, basically a wrestling channel uh, with my guys from the Hive, um, Matt and Christian. So make sure you uh, go to Ring Rundown Podcast to hit that sub button and watch out for that if you're interested in wrestling. We'll be re- recapping Monday Night Raw, NXT, AEW, and Friday Night SmackDown, and then, of course, the pay-per-views. Um, but... Yeah, and then um, make sure you hit that like, subscribe button on on the Niner page for our faithful podcast. We're on Facebook as well, Twitch, Instagram, X, Kick. What else? Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah, all the social media platforms. And if you want to listen to the audio portion, we are definitely on all the podcast um, platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, all that good stuff. So watch out for that and hit that follow button. Appreciate it. Uh, we're at 699 subscribers right now on YouTube. So if y'all want to do me a solid and hit that sub button, we'll hit 700. And, and, and yeah, we're getting there. Almost that? 2000. Huh? Oh, for your, for your uh, Niner For channel. the Niner one. Okay. Yeah. For, for, I thought for you were talking about WWE. I'm like, wow, that's fast. No. Shit, I wish. Um, I actually streamed WrestleMania um, on Twitch for <laughs> for the Ring Rundown podcast. Don't forget to follow Brandon's uh, MyFace channel, according to Joey. <laughs> and uh, I had over 1,100 uh, viewers watching WrestleMania. So it was wow. pretty cool. Yeah. That's cool, man. For those that love wrestling and you get into the wrestling, make sure to follow my boy Brandon. I go on there. Uh, I'm trying to get myself familiarized with all the new characters. Uh, I used to watch them uh, faithfully uh, in the past. I kind of got away from it a little bit and moved on. Um, and then now I'm trying to get my itch back on. But I love the I love the way Matt and uh, Christian and Brandon come together and that that fire they have for for wrestling. So if you're into wrestling, uh, make sure to follow them, support them, guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, as for me, on Fridays, right now we've been a little bit of hiatus because uh, we Except just haven't had been day. able to connect me and uh, Jess. Uh, but we definitely have our Friday uh, night uh, shows, the Niners Now podcast. <laughs> the Niners Now podcast. Uh, and so make sure to follow us. I got I to gotta talk to Jess to confirm, but me and Jess might be doing uh, the draft live like we did last year, all three days. And we'll have special guests come on and so forth. Once I, I come in agreement with her and we, we agree we can do it, I'll let you guys know. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. Everyone, uh, appreciate you. Let everyone know Warriors are going to lose and they're losing badly against the um, Kings. Uh, and we'll see the Kings. The Warriors have to play another game <laughs> uh, against the, uh, the Pelicans. So we'll see if they can beat the Pelicans. All right, guys. Well, Zion got Zion got hurt, so we'll see. Did he really? Yeah. You guys will still lose. 
Yeah, you guys will lose two and four, so it's okay. <laughs> it's all right, bro. I, at least, hey, me, me and Pete are not hiding from losing in this series, bro. We're not, we're not in denial. I mean, you make it into the Lakers. The, I just want to make the, the series. That's it, we've, okay? got, we've got, we've got enough championships for everybody. Like, I just so. want to make the playoffs. That's it. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. War, <laughs> Warriors should be lucky. You know, Warriors fans sound like Rams fans. They all excited with just two Super Bowls. Oh, shut the fuck up. No, we don't. You guys <laughs> yeah, are just a bunch of Ram Ram fans. fans. <laughs> at least we won in, in recent time. The Niners haven't won in, in over 30 years. And I talk a lot. The Bubbles NBA champion doesn't count. I, yeah, it uh, doesn't. Yeah, yeah. About the local end of the goddamn stream. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> we're out of here. Go, go Kings. Go Lakers. We're out of here. Okay. Peace. Yeah. Niners for life. Right. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero.